The attack on Gab proves free speech was never free. Who runs Bar to Town? Auntie Entity in Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. The First Amendment protects your right to say whatever you want free from government prosecution. It does not protect you from saying hateful things on private properties or privately owned forums without fear of repercussion. That is the very definition of freedom of association. Now, Friday's attack on an unhinged, vile piece of human excrement on a synagogue in Pittsburgh wasn't hours old before real-world agendas pushed to the top of the news. Twitter alternative Gab was immediately dropped by PayPal without specific reasons. Then immediately, Gab's latest hosting service unilaterally gave the company a 48-hour termination notice of its contract. This is the second time Gab has had to switch providers this year. They have been denied an app in the iOS store. Google will not allow their Android app to be in the Play Store. Now, why is Gab targeted? Because Gab is a true alternative to Twitter, which exists outside of the control of the financial and political oligarchy. With the recent passing of the EU's Link Law, which was designed to shut down opposition voices, the merged corporate and political oligarchy are moving to ensure that all speech is criminalized. But to do that, they have to first square the circle around that pesky First Amendment in the U.S. And that means outsourcing the censorship to the companies who own the internet access points, the app platforms, the social media giants, the hosting firms, and the payment processors. Because if you can't build and maintain a business, then you can't oppose their rule. With apologies to Trey Parker and Matt Stone, freedom isn't free, it costs a buck oh five. This is a classic barrier to entry stuff that the government engages in to protect the market share of the favored companies over their competition. And despite the roadblocks put up in front of it, Gab has continued to grow. The platform has improved. I know. I've been a member since 2016 when it was only a haven for the most vile of people. That early culture drove me away along with its limitations, but then again, I'm pretty bad at this whole social media thing anyway. But today, that's not the case. Gab simply doesn't censor you. If you want to be a jackass in public, that's your business. It doesn't seem to stop Elizabeth Warren at all. What content you consume and produce is your responsibility, and CEO Andrew Torba has given you the tools to speak freely or be freely ignored. In fact, the censorship tools are stronger than they are on Twitter. Gab is more stringent in enforcing its policy to remove speech which is a clear incitement to violence than Twitter is. And that's the irony of this. The synagogue shooter was a member of Gab. He also had a Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram account. They did this to Gab because they could and because they were told to. Now, Gab's statement about the shooting is public for all the world to see, or at least it was until Medium took it down. And they assisted the police in identifying the person responsible. And yet Gab will be off the air this time for weeks while it migrates to a new platform because its existence is a threat to the powerful who are rightly scared of losing their new shiny control platform. It shouldn't matter whether you like Gab's platform or not. Are there terrible people on Gab? Yes. Are there terrible people hosting horrific things on Twitter? Oh, you betcha. Businesses which are paying their bills should be welcomed by service providers. Hosting a platform is not an endorsement of the contents on that platform. A 48-hour shutdown notice was designed to destroy Gab's business. The companies terminating these contracts are doing so because of the pressure from those that want Gab shut down case closed. And they are hiding behind their vaguely worded terms of service to act unilaterally because none of these companies actually believe in free speech. And that the hand of the Davos crowd is behind this move to shut down alternative speech platforms is chilling. They are willing to deprive a peaceable man, in this case, Gab CEO, his right to associate with all who are willing to support him is despicable. Free speech is cheap. Defending it costs money. It's also messy and chaotic. It means building new systems that prevent this from happening again. The only people who want to see free speech curtailed are those who are scared by what people will say about them. Everyone else should be happy vile men like the shooter let everyone know just exactly who the hell they are. They help us to define the limits of our associations. Those that spend their money supporting platforms like Gab, news outlets like Infowars, or even people like myself are the means by which we break their control. 
Because people like Dave Rubin, Joe Rogan, and even Sargon of Akkad have larger audiences now than CNN. Their credibility gap with the public is massive, and it'll never be crossed. So moves like this are ultimately desperation. These people still think the old rules still apply, that these power brokers still control the transmission of information. Gab will find a new home. Within hours of their pending deplatforming, another service provider offered them a home, apparently looking to build a business hosting the unwanted, the maligned, and the persecuted. I'm putting them in my bookmark folder for future reference. Governments are like generals, always fighting the last war, and humans are too smart to be kept down for too long. Someone will always find a way to work around an existing problem, and if that problem is censorship, then the solution is technology. That's what the division of labor is all about. Gab itself was a reaction to Silicon Valley's hatred of free speech. Eventually, all of this will be put on a blockchain and paid for outside of the normal banking system if Soros, Zuckerberg, Merkel, and the rest of these corporatists continue pushing for total control over speech. Meanwhile, Gab had its best couple of days in terms of new accounts ever. Just like Alex Jones saw interest in Infowars spike after his unpersoning in August. So I have no doubt that Gab will survive because as Ron Paul so brilliantly said during his runs for the presidency, freedom is popular. And that freedom is what Twitter and Facebook have forgotten. They were popular because of their lack of filter, their anarchy. And if there's one thing the government hates, it's competition. What's the antithesis to government? The lack of it. When everybody wakes up one day and realizes we don't need the government to control our speech, what are they going to do then to justify their existence? Everything great in the world was created through voluntary exchange, through functional anarchy. Even if you disagree with this article, you are doing so freely without any coercion. All I can do is offer up my best ideas and see if you like them. I can't make you listen to this. And I don't do it for free. I do it because I feel what I have to say is worth not only your time, but your direct support. And so far, more than 210 of you have chosen freely to do just that. And I love every single one of you. Just like I supported Gab at the outset, sending in donations because I saw this coming. I knew that money spent today was a down payment on a world without speech controls tomorrow. And that's something we should all shout about at the top of our lungs.